I won't go so far as to say it was a lost cause, but it certainly wasn't a losing situation. He didn't come preaching to the world. Understand that. He said, I am sent to the lost sheep. of the house of Israel. You know, this stands the reason. That of Israel is God's chosen people of the earth. Not because of who they are. We should know by now and understand what kind of choices God makes. He chooses the worst. Tell the Jews that they probably get a beer. A lot of Jews go out there haughty, <laughs> arrogant, because they're God's chosen people and they don't understand the term. If they knew that God has chosen them, the weak things and the foolish things and the base things is one more. Despise. Things despise. It says in scriptures, these things has God chosen. It proceeds that verse by saying not many mighty are called by God. <laughs> Not many from ability are called by God. Not many kings and king's children and king's families. Rich folks and rich families are called by God. God has called the sinners of people much like us. Every day, nobodies. And it's taken us and made us every day somebodies. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But the chosen people should only receive the choices of blessing from God, and that's Jesus Christ himself. And he sent them to his people to save them. And the bottom line, after three and a half years ministering to Israel, they rejected him. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Come. Come. Then again, you know, their record of these people, it's not hard to believe. When God sent one prophet, I think it was Ezekiel, to prophesy, he said, it'd be something different for a prophet, for a sister to prophesy to a strange nation, to people of a hard speech and understand your words. He said, I didn't. I sent you to your own people. And before he sent the prophet, he said, they're not going to believe you. That's the worst response a prophet can receive, is not being believed. Knowing that he has a message that came directly from God. But God bolstered his confidence by saying, don't be surprised they don't believe you because they don't believe me. It's not impossible to believe. But if Jesus came down here and talked to the rapture message like he has given to you, some wouldn't believe it. From him, I know that. Because some didn't believe what came from him. Because it came out of my mouth. Connect this with last Sunday's message about the fig tree. <laughs> these are these three years have I come seeking fruit and found none. That's about Israel. And the owner of the vineyard said, cut it down. 
why should it cumber the ground? And the caretaker asked for another year. So let me dig about it, dunk it, fertilize it. If it brings forth fruit, well, if not, cut it down. He ministered for three and a half years. So they were in <coughs> that fourth year. You see? Yes. It was time to cut this nation down. They've been encompassing the, the ground of God, not bringing forth fruit. So this time is coming to a close because of their unbelief. Which for us Gentiles sitting here today, seated as the Bible says together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, we're here because they were cut down. We receive mercy because of their unbelief. And if they get saved, and they will, they'll receive mercy because of the mercy God gave to us. They should hear that message. They know that. But overall, his four years, three and a half years preaching to them was a disappointment. We came riding in to the temple, to the verse 10, and he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved. This is the greatest parade in the history of the world. One man, two animals. Zachariah, Old Testament prophet. So when your king comes in, he's going to know he's your king. Because he's going to come in what? Right upon an ass and on a coat, the fall of an ass. The little part that the Jesus movies leave out at Easter time. They show him running in on an ass. As everybody strewed up palm leaves, laid their coats, made a road for him. They made a road no one had ever ridden on before. And cried Hosanna to the son of David. He came in right in the ass. The older beast representing Judaism. He got to the city Got off the ass, got in the coke, the newer animal, representative of the church. Called a prophecy in motion, an act out prophecy. And wrote in. They got there, they said, Who is this? And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. To show his, his ministry is not successful, it says when Jesus went out to the temple, went to the temple of God, and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, it is written, my house, my house, shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made a den of thieves. Many churches are guilty of that same thing today. You watch the television ministry, they spend more time offering packages to you to buy. You buy a whole package of 10 messages. And to buy that, we give this free book. Peter said they make merchandise of you. They do more advertising than they do 
preaching about Jesus. Same thing they were doing. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and healed him. And he healed him. <coughs> and when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were so displeased. On the water. How can you get this please? Well, you see this great man in the temple healing the blind and the lame. And they took the cause of folks to say to him, Hosanna, what kind of preacher are these? Whose kingdom are they in? Whose side were they on? And he said unto them, and they, they said unto him, Hearest thou? What they say? They thought that's bastard. And Jesus said unto them, Yea. Yeah, yeah. Have you never read? Look what he's saying. Break it down. Don't do the whole thing one time. He says, Yeah, here. Then he asked them, Have you never read? These are scribes and priests. Should be free for the God. Have you ever read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? He's trying to tell me, so you're seeing the scripture fulfilled in front of your face. You're seeing children praising him out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, praise to God being perfected. He said, you're too far from God's word to recognize. Next line. And he left him. And went out from the city to Bethany and he lodged there. Jerusalem, the capital of God, had fallen so far from God that Jesus wouldn't even sleep there. Went to the next, next town. Stuck in Bethany. Now in the morning as he returned to the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing there, but leaves only. And said unto it, let no fruit grow on thee, henceforward, Forever. Amen. And presently, that word presently means right in the presence. In the presence, the fig tree withered away. Imagine what it looked like to see your master talking to a tree. And they saw that. And they heard it said. Some of his disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is a fig tree with this is a Nazareth? A tree or a plant dies in stages. Those of you have plants in your house, you, 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 you know that. That's you know it's time to water the plant. So this one's dying and give it water. Or some miracle girl, or something like that. A plant is not just go from green, or come turn a brownish color, and become brittle. Right now, it's a process. You got plants in your house, and you neglect. Not because you just don't like the plant, you just don't have time to take care. Of it. It's amazing that plant just thrives anyhow and neglect. Keeps on growing. This tree turned brown and dry and brittle right then. It completely died. Jesus answered said unto them, Verily I said to you, if you have faith and doubt not, you should not only do this, which is done to the fig tree, but also if you should say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast to the sea, it shall be done. It's hard for us to believe that. But he's saying the day is coming. When there's going to be things in your way. Obstacles. Mountains. Trees. He said in that day, during that 10 day period of time, you will speak these things and they'll move because of the situation. you got to believe that. And all things, let's serve you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. 
This is where that Vanderbilt process, that Vanderbilt doctor came in. This is Marcus Town, I got some great bills in there. The name of Clement Doctor. Grab it. Grab it. Get the path of Marcus up there, man. Yeah. Back to grab the stuff. Ask God where you want. The guy's going to give us. That's what we're seeing here. He's talking about those who know his will. Ask things concerning his will. And he was coming to the temple of the chief priests and the elders when the temple came to him as he was teaching. That's pretty rude, don't you think? He's doing what I'm doing, and they got to walk up their way to teach me. And say, you know, when people are, are godless, they're arrogant. And they're arrogant in the ways of God, not the things of God. That's what we have to teach sometimes how to be respectful of God's house. Not let your children run loose in the wild in here, it's his house. We let our kids do things in God's house and we will remain in our own house. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And particularly this area where God speaks from, it's a sacred area. Maybe they're experienced they had to come here and say something. Total response. Total situation. <laughs> Listen, by what authority does do us all these things? And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I'm going to mention him. He's going to do the things of God, healing the lame and the blind. They have never asked him by what authority to do these things. They were spiritually dead. Now you, he's there teaching. He obviously has taken authority over this house. He did that yesterday when he came in and overturned the money, the money tables and made a will and beat those who sold the doves and the pictures at, at inflated prices because it was passed over time. He made it very clear that this is my house, I'm in charge of it. He came the next day and he didn't wait to be asked to come and read like he did in, in the earlier chapters when he first started preaching to Jerusalem. When he said they gave the scripture and he called to read, this time he got on his own because he's taking over. I, I, I remember this chapter, a hostile takeover of the house of God. He's teaching, as he was teaching, they came up and said, by what authority do us thought these things, and who gave this authority? Understand, he's in charge, he ain't got to answer no question. That's right. He'd be cool to let them, to let them even ask the question. He could have said to them, sit down, shut up. I'm in charge now. Y'all been just in charge of this house for a couple thousand years and have done anything God told you to do. I come in one day and you're upset. <laughs> so what did Jesus do? He turned to that Jesus I love. And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will, also, I will also ask you one thing. Which if you tell me, my answer, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. Is that wrong with him? No. He's in charge. He can answer the question. He has the right to ask the question. You see those movies, they say, look, I asked the question. <laughs> Don't ask nothing here. That's what it's like. So I mean, I'll ask the question. The baptism of John. I mean, had I been then, knowing the wisdom, in the mind of Jesus. I would just say, oh, never mind, it's okay, and I'm about to sit down. Forget it, we'll sit and listen to you. Because you know, if you're gonna ask him one question, it's gonna be a doozy. And it was. The baptism of John. Which was it? That's old King James, I mean, updated. Where did it come from? Where did John's baptism come from? From heaven, or did John make it up? That's paraphrasing here. 
And they reasoned with